All right, today we're going to be using the Ornament 8 as a clock source for other synthesizers. To do that, we're going to use two cells, cells 1 and 2. Connect the trigger output of cell 1 to the trigger input of cell 2. Trigger output of cell 2 to the trigger input of cell 1. And set. Now we have a very, very fast infinite loop. Cell 2 is going to be the clock pulse, and cell 1 is going to be the duration of the clock pulse. We have the CV output, the pulsar output of cell 2 coming out of this converter into the first channel of the Mordax data scope, and then passing through to the clock input of the microfreak. So as I change the duration of cell 1, you can see the clock pulses coming from cell 2 start to spread out from each other in time on the scope. Let's get our arpeggiator going on the synthesizer. You can see we're set to 16th notes and one pulse per quarter. It's really going to depend a lot on the settings of your synthesizer and the range of clock speeds that the synth is capable of. On the micro freak, when you go below its lowest speed, it will just play the first note of the arpeggio repeatedly. There's some other fun things we can do with the clock. We can use an additional cell to speed up or slow down the clock. We're going to take the CV output of cell 3 and we're going to connect it to channel 2 of the scope so we can view the voltage change. Set the cell duration to a medium duration and every time you set it you can see the voltage rise from 0 to 10 volts. Let's make it a little longer. And now let's connect this CV output to the CV input of our duration cell. It stopped. And that's because right now cell 3 is sending 0 volts. And so this cell is paused until cell 3 is activated. Let's get our ARP going again, and let's trigger cell 3. A little longer. You can also do the opposite if you invert the polar polarity of the controlling cell. So this technique can be lots of fun if you have a sequence going with most of the ornament and you want to dedicate a bit of it to be a clock, then you can use the CV outputs of the other cells to create sort of a dynamically changing clock. Um, it's also fun to use the X2 input 
on the length cell because that can change the duration of it and create more variation in the clock. Hope you enjoy this technique. Hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching.